Let's continue our development of this assembly by adding a second spindle, as you can see here. And what I also want to do is copy all of the hardware that I have from this spindle. So I've selected it here on the left side in the uh, browser, and I'm just going to right click and hit copy. And once it's finished loading, it's going to copy all of that, all of those parts. Now I'm going to paste. And once I paste, Fusion is going to give me the option to move all of this hardware at once. So what I can do is I can just take this and drag it, and you can see that it's made an exact copy of that hardware. Now I'm going to place this here and just kind of move it to a spot that's convenient for me to work with. And I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm just going to create the same mates that we have um, on this spindle. The next thing we want to do is create a hole in the body of our vehicle. And so as you can see, I've created a hole here. It's 190 thousandths of an inch large. And you can see the way that I've dimensioned this out is I've created uh, this hole uh, 50 degrees from the straight at the top at 0.9 inches away. And this hole is going to accept a number 10 screw. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to mate this washer to here with a rigid constraint. And once I mate that, I'm going to have to flip it. Once I mate that, I'm going to add the screw on top of it. So I'm going to mate the screw, rigid constraint again. And you can use either a rigid constraint or you could use a revolute constraint. Now, they do similar things, but the screw is not really moving in this example. So we're going to leave it for, with rigid just for now. So I'm going to click on this and that's that's what we want so I'm going to hit OK. And with that completed, what we can do is we can begin to model a new spindle that can fit in this tight space. Now as you can see there isn't really much room here because you don't want to come into contact with the sprocket. So if we need to, we're going to move this down, but we're going to see if we can build a uh, spindle that can fit on here. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to open up this idler spindle. So I'm going to open this. And what I'm going to do is file, save as. And instead of idler spindle, I want to call it the rotator spindle. This is the rotator spindle. I'm going to save it. And now I'm going to right click and edit the sketch that I used to make the actual uh, revolution. And so as you can see here, uh, there are a lot of dimensions that we don't need anymore. So the first one that I'm going to change is the 0.40. What I could do is I could change this to be 0.35 and, and see how how down it comes. So this pocket right here is the pocket for the uh, bearing. So we can come pretty close to that, but we want to have some wall thickness here. So we don't want to come too close. I'm going to see if I can go for a quarter inch. Now that's not enough. This needs to be 0.275 maybe, and there needs to be a bit of wall there. Now if you need to, you can set a dimension here and make it a reference dimension. So you can see the wall is 40,000, so that's not enough. Um, we need to we need to add to this, so I'm going to say 0.3125 maybe. So 078, um, that's more than I want, but it looks like that's what we need here. Now I'm going to get rid of these lines. Uh, we don't need them. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close off the shape here. And do is just kind of drag this 
um, here into place. You can just click on these two points and make them coincident. Same thing on the other side. I'm just going to delete these lines and I'm going to make these coincident. And now you can see that we have a completely different uh, part. And so um, this feature failed. Um, that's to be expected. Those will go all the way through the part. But this is uh, what we want. We want to have an idler that doesn't have that uh, wall that we had in the last one. Now we're going to do something that we've done in the past. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste the washer that we've used before. And once I've copied it, I can sort of move it around a little bit if I need to. But what I really want to do is do a joint, of course. And I'm going to select the circle there. And I'm going to select this hole right here. And once they're attached and I flip it in the direction I want, then all I have to do is just hit OK. And now what I want to do is I want to bring out the ball bearing. So I'm going to copy and paste this twice uh, because I want two of these. So I'm just going to paste this two times. And what I want to do is same thing joint, but I'm going to make it a joint to uh, this piece right here. So uh, we could do a rigid constraint and we're just going to place that right in there. I'm going to flip it backwards and same thing on the other side. Uh, once that loads, we're going to do joint and I'm going to select this once again. Now I'm going to flip this back. I'm going to add this uh, to this side here. And once these are placed accordingly, all we have to do is the final mating. And so we're going to attach this uh, with a joint constraint. This is going to be a revolute constraint this time uh, because we want this piece to spin. And so I'm going to choose uh, the circle right here. And I'm going to choose the circle here on the washer. And if I flip this back, I'm going to hit OK. And you're going to see that the entire thing has attached itself. So from here, um, we can just kind of do a quick overview of what we have. We have our idler spindle, we have our motor driven sprocket, and we now have a new piece of the puzzle, which is this uh, spindle right here, the rotator spindle. And what we need to do now is we need to build uh, some sort of structure to allow us to have, to, to basically attach the idler spindle to this bottom section here. Because this bottom section here needs to be uh, kept in place. It needs something to, to rotate around. So we're going to um, attach it here to our rotator spindle. And that's going to be in the next uh, part of this. What we want to do from here is edit our rotator spindle. So I'm going to open it on its own. And as you could see, I made this inner hole larger. The reason being that the bearing that fits inside here um, the inner race, I don't want the inner race to touch the surface because it can slow it down because of friction between those two faces. Uh, that being said, what we want to do is we want to edit this first with the length of it. So if I go back to my assembly and we're looking at this right here, that spindle, if we look at it from the side, you could actually see that it's it's not sticking out all the way. It needs to be much longer. It's sticking out on this side past the roller chain, but it's not sticking out on this side. So we're going to come over here and we're going to edit our original sketch. And instead of 2.255 uh, here, we're going to add 
um, 100,000, so I'm gonna make this a square 125. And just gonna finish up the sketch. So now I'm gonna save it, I'm gonna come back to my assembly. And when I update it, you're going to see that it sticks out proud past the spindle, and that's what we want. Uh, that being said, we're gonna add an arm to the rotator spindle. So the way we're gonna do that is um, we're going to add an arm, a sketch arm. So what we wanna do is click on his face. We're going to create a sketch. And this is going to be a slot. So we wanna to come to our slot, here it is. And this is going to be a center to center. I'm gonna click on the center. And when I drag out, I want this to be 0.915, hit enter. And now you can kind of drag that out to whatever you want it to be. So I'm just gonna uh, leave this here. And I could just make this vertical. It doesn't matter because it rotates anyway, so it doesn't matter uh, really where you put it. And from here, if I need to, I can project this circle. That way I can click on these two circles and I can put them on top of each other. I can um, place them right on top of each other. So we want them to be uh, within each other. We want them to be tangent. And so I can click on this, click on this. They need to be concentric, that's the first thing, but we also want them to be equal and that's going to make it tangent. So let's add our dimension. This is going to be 0.915. And this point right here, we're going to have a hole. And that hole is going to be the dimension of the screw that runs through it. Now the screw dimension is 0.190. That's the major diameter of our screw. But we want to um, maybe add a little bit of play here. So I'm going to add, uh, let's say 15 thousandths. Uh, that way it's a clearance hole. I'm gonna finish the sketch. And from here I can do an extrusion. And we're gonna drag this out um, about something like that. And for right now, we just wanna kinda take a look at, at what we have. We don't, we don't need to take it uh, too far just yet. As you can see, I've created the arm on my rotator spindle, and I can rotate this to see how it would behave in real life. And if we look at it from the front, um, we can see the actuation uh, range. And so the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna build the arm on the other side so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up this rotator spindle on its own. And once it's open on its own, I can come over here and create a sketch on this face. And I'm basically going to copy this face. So I'm gonna come and click on the P key, uh, key on the keyboard. And if you need to, you may need to also select the circle here and once you have those selected, what you can do is trim the sketch a little bit. Uh, trim off this little section right here. And I'm going to extrude. So I'm going to come to solid, extrude. And I'm going to click on these circles. And this is going to be a joint operation and I can just kind of leave it like this for now. And I want to take a, a dimension between these two faces. So I'm going to select these two faces, 2.142. Now I want to see if we can reuse one of the parts that we've used before. What I want to do is try to get this distance to be 2.335. So what I can do is I can come to our original sketch and I can just go ahead and make this larger. And I'm basically going to work on these dimensions 
until I could get it closer to what I want. And if necessary, I can choose to um, make this a little bit less thick, which is going to um, allow for a, for a much closer dimension to what we need. So we're gonna add about a hundred thousandths more. And if we need to, uh, we will dig into the uh, thickness of this arm. So uh, we're going to take one more dimension. And 2.342, so that's, that's about what we want. So I'm just gonna make sure this is saved. And we're gonna come back to our assembly and now I'm gonna update the whole thing. And you're going to see now that we have two arms here. And what I need to do is basically attach um, this spindle to this one. And so the way we're, we're gonna do that is we're going to just create some mates. I'm going to do a joint constraint. And I'm going to make this a revolute constraint. It's going to be this circle. I'm gonna rotate this out and I'm gonna select the washer, which is right here on this face. And so uh, with that selected, we just hit okay. And you can see everything is snapped back into place. And what we can do here is we can see some of the errors or some of the sections where we need to, we need to make some changes. So as you can see, um, the screw is not long enough to come out of the, the, the screw is, is not long enough to come out of the nut. That's an issue. That's something that, that we need to look into. Um, also, this arm is biting into the spindle. So these are just the, the types of uh, things that you'll see come up in CAD and uh, the sorts of um, issues that you need to work through. So we're gonna come back to our rotator spindle and I'm gonna change up this dimension over here um, on this arm. Now, let's go to edit the feature and we're, we're gonna make this uh, about a hundred thousandths. Now we want it to be large enough that, that it's usable and strong, but also not enough that it's biting into our part here. Uh, we need to have uh, enough space. Oh, so once this loads up, um, we're gonna see if we have enough room